Luxury without limitations. Style without compromise. A life well lived. Welcome to Selling the Lux Life, the only radio show that seeks out and highlights the deeply authentic and genuinely meaningful, unique luxury lifestyle experiences in Orange County. Bringing new and emerging premier products and services to discerning clients and connecting the affluent customer to the finer things in life. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Selling the Lux Life. We are at High Times in Costa Mesa, which is a great location. Thank you, High Times, for letting us shoot here since they are a carrier of this product right here, Carbonati, which is a wonderful beverage that I had a chance to uh, sample uh, earlier um, in December. Okay. And with me are the people behind Carbonati, Nancy Choi and Ricky Miller. Thanks, guys, for being here. Thanks for having us. Um, and so... Why don't we tell people a little bit about this? Okay. Okay, but not too much. All right. Because I really want to get the backstory as well, right? Okay. But what are we looking at in here? It's a dark, mysterious bottle. What is what is in the bottle? So in a nutshell, Carbonati is a, um, a high-end Italian sipping vodka. Wait, hold on. Italian sipping vodka? What do the Italians know about vodka? Actually, Isn't that the Poles and the Russians? And... Well, their, their core competency is quality, high quality. And so, you know, we wanted to tap in... To an area of the world um, that you know hasn't really been utilized for vodka, yeah. and but also had the you know had incredible ingredients and had a lot of incredible limitless marketing potential. So let me let me ask you this, Ricky, and, and I just I turned the bottle around because yeah. I want to, it's actually proudly on the back of the bottle. There is the, the Italian flag, mm -hmm. um, but I, I, let's talk a little bit more about that because I remember a couple of years ago where I basically found out that there's actually places in India. Mm -hmm. That has to actually have champagne. That there's actually champagne production in India. Sparkling and wine. Sparkling wine, right? <laughs> <laughs> a, a true connoisseur. <laughs> Forgive me, champagne France, for calling Indian champagne anything other than sparkling wine. But to your point, yes, wine, wine, this wine region in India mm -hmm. and sparkling wine. Yep. And that blew my mind because we don't usually think about these sources of having that. So what is the what is the background of vodka in Italy? <clears throat> Well, there's not there's not a lot of background okay. of vodka in Italy. It, it really it's it's the wheat, and they have incredible winter wheat, some of the finest uh, in the world. So it's the wheat that so it's a wheat vodka, one hundred percent organic winter wheat. Yeah, so um, you know we we felt like you know a ton of great products come from Italy, yeah. um, but no one was tapping in for wine, and you can make perfectly fine vodka from from wheat. And so, you know, like I said, we wanted to tap into an area of the world that had been underutilized, yeah. just because vodka is such a saturated. Um, category sure um so we need, we wanted something different but we didn't want it to be different just to be different we wanted to tap into a place that made sense to tap into where in italy i also want to add even though it's organic yeah it's also gluten free it's gluten free and organic yeah okay and is any particular part of italy that you guys are are uh, sourcing this from lagnasco the piedmont region the piedmont italy, region. yeah which is which for wine lovers know is an incredible region absolutely you know for wine and and you know nancy's favorite white truffle now there's more to this though, Nancy. Right? It's yeah. not just only uh, wheat. It's not only organic. Yeah. It's not only GMO. There's also an aspect to the process of this there that's a little a unusual, aspects, right? Yes. Why don't we talk about that? The first I would want to go into is it goes through um, the regular filtration process, which is with activated charcoal. Mm -hmm. But what really highlights and clarifies and gives it the pristine flavor that it has is the carbonati filtration. And let's say, tell us a little bit more about that. So the carbonates are natural black lines. And before they're polished, they're microporous. And so every drop is pressurized through a chamber filled with black lines. Wow. <laughs> to give it its clarity. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <It's> right. <coughs> no, I, I, I choked up on that. I mean, you know, I'm drinking something that's filtered through black yeah. diamonds. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That's amazing. And so, so how did you guys, how did we find ourselves here today? Like, did you guys have been always involved in this? I mean, this is pretty innovative how this product is put together, right? And, and the yeah. fact that you went to Italy to do this mm -hmm. and it's wheat based. Have you always been involved in this, you, you guys? I mean, or give us a little bit of background about how you find yourself do this. Nancy and I were actually introduced um, by mutual friend. Um, you know, I was in the beverage industry before, non alcoholic, had no alcohol experience at all. Um, and uh, you know, had a couple products, um, a sleep shot, a couple 
of sports drinks, um, but just had this idea and dream of starting a luxury spirit. Um, but just knew that it, you know, it took a lot of <clears throat> education, a lot of um, capital, and wanted to, you know, take some time to do it the right way. I mean, there's there's so many, you know, vodka brands started every year, and so many fail just because people enter the market not knowing what to expect. And so I wanted to mitigate <clears throat> or minimize as many of those risks as possible. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so just start, I jumped in, and you know, I've just I've always been this maverick entrepreneur that just I didn't really think about it too much. I always just started it and figured it out. And, um, you know, typically, you know, found out it was a good idea or a bad idea, you know, fairly early on. So um, this, you know, was something that as I dug and dug and dug, seemed like a real opportunity. And, um, you know, I could only get it so far, you know, I, when it was time to go out and, and raise the necessary capital, you know, I needed to bring the brains in. And that's Nancy. You know, Nancy's a former investment banker and, and just the total opposite of me and, and comes to the table with, you know, you know talents and, and, mm -hmm. and specialties that I just, I, I, that I'm not very good at. And so we complement each other really well. You know, we couldn't be so much, you know, so we couldn't be any more different and couldn't be any more Yeah, but insane, I think, so. I think that's, that's a very interesting point that you bring out. And it's a very valid point. Anybody who's been in that situation with that kind of a relationship, you know, there, there are some of us, I'm guilty as charged as well, where we're trying to build the plane out while we're in flight, right? Yeah. And then there, we, but we need that, we need that support system behind us to basically that not only is going to provide sort of the mechanics to make sure that the plane stays in the air, yeah. but also has the ability to capture the vision and see where that's going. Because it's also, if you're trying to put out something like this, which is a luxury product, you know, thus having you guys on the show, is you've got to have that vision, but people are going to have to also promote and pitch it from a, from a place of authenticity and real belief in the product. And let me, and let me add that, there, you know, the partners actually don't come as good as Nancy. You know, she actually started out as an investor. And so she believed in the product so much so that she put her money, you know, it's one thing to find a partner that's like, oh yeah, let's do that together. But she actually put her money up first and was a, a real partner mm -hmm. or a really believed in the brand. And then, and then was like, you know what? I love the brand. I love what you're doing. I want to be part of this, you know? So she, you know, you don't meet too many people that match your fire in terms of hustle. And, you know, she's definitely exceeded that. That's and awesome. so that, that's what's made it just so much better. So I, I have a practical question, Nancy. Mm -hmm. From your perspective on this, okay, I mean, and Rick, you mentioned this. There's a lot of brands, a lot of vodkas, gins, tequilas, like the, the latest kind of fad mm -hmm. trend that people want to get into. Mm -hmm. What made you look at this from your perspective and go, yes, I like the idea, but also from an investment perspective, this made sense to you? So... Excuse me, I have a little bit of a sure. Cold, but, um, the biggest thing was when I looked into this industry, I had to figure out whether or not there was an opportunity. Okay. And the biggest question is when's opportunity? Okay. And when you look at the wines and the people, the way people are consuming wines or champagne, everybody's trading up. Everybody knows what they're drinking, understands what they're drinking, and really want the quality and the experience to go with that. Mm -hmm. And people are more refined, and so they're drinking the better wine. Champagnes, gins have elevated. Tequilas, like you said, have elevated. Um, whiskeys, for sure, have elevated. And when you look at all the categories, the only one that was left with a huge opportunity ahead of us was within the vodka space. Interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. See, I, I and, and I'm, we're going to take a break, but I'll, I'll just end with this. When I was handed the bottle, mm -hmm. you know, it came with no instructions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, and um, I want to give out a shout out to Tracy for, for for giving me that bottle. So thanks, Tracy. I am not a vodka drinker. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In fact, I pride myself on being a martini gin drinker. Oh, nice. Okay, uh, yeah. but here I was a bottle of vodka. And I was like, well, what am I going to do with this bottle of vodka, right? Yeah. So thank you very much. But it was I was intrigued because of the carbonation. Uh, the Carbonati name because of the process you mentioned. There is no carbonation. No, there's no <laughs> it's it's uh, it's black, black diamond. diamonds. It's black diamonds. They're known as carbonati. No, people and, do people do yeah, sometimes carbonation. Think that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I was intrigued, and then I happened to be a proud owner of an Alfa Romeo Spider from 1985. Nice. So when you slapped a, an Italian flag on the back side of a vodka bottle, I was like curious now. Yeah. So I opened it, and and it was interesting that you mentioned earlier about the sipping component, yeah. right? Because when I reached out to you guys and said, hey, I want you guys on the show, yeah. my immediate reaction was, this was like sipping a high-grade high, high grade tequila for me as far as an experience. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, we, I mean, we, 
the reason, you know, we, we say sipping, you know, every vodka says that you can sip it. No, we truly created this to be sipped, mm-hmm. right? And and really the thinking behind that was that, you know, other companies might say, you know, there are luxury vodkas out there. But for us, there's, you know, we, we want to create a real luxury product. Right. And to us, the other brands that claim to be luxury, they have lower end brands. And then they just have more expensive brands. The only thing that changed is that they have fancier words mm-hmm. and fancier fonts, and they cost more. Mm-hmm. And so we wanted Back to create. Yeah, and so you know, it, the, the their product, their higher end product, is consumed the same exact way. It's just going to be mixed. You know, uh, uh, we're going to take a break. We'll come back and we'll talk a little bit more about that. We'll sample together uh, a little bit of Carbonati. So we'll be right back with selling the Lux line. Welcome back to Selling the Lux Life. I'm Rod Gantis, and I got my guests with me today, the people behind this wonderful beverage, Carbonati, that we were talking about before the break, Nancy Choi and Ricky Miller. Thanks, guys, for being here again. And when we were when we we're during the break, we we're getting ready to sample some of the Carbonati. Uh, we were talking about something that I had no clue about. I mean, it makes perfect sense, but Nancy, you brought up the fact that people have different drinking profiles. They do. So a lot of people will ask how we recommend it to be sipped. I personally recommend it according to my taste profile, which is on the rocks. Okay. Um, other people will refuse it on the rocks, like him, because <laughs> they actually like the, the taste as is, yeah. just at room temperature. Other people like to put it in the freezer and have it chilled meat mm. with no ice. You know, it's so. funny because I, I, I can I can get both of that. Mm-hmm. There are certain things that, like, I, I'm, a, I'm a big steak eater, okay? The best way for me to, to have a steak is to have it barely tenderized with salt mm-hmm. and not covered with any sauces mm-hmm. because I want to taste the different cuts of meat. Yeah, sure. And I learned that from a friend of mine from Argentina, and that's how they barbecue in Argentina. They tenderize with, with salt, yeah. and you can taste everything, any cut, differently if you do that, mm-hmm. right? And so I will go to places, and when I see it clumped with sauce, it's like, what's the quality of the meat? Yeah. So I can totally get it, Ricky, that you know when you're tasting it in its purest form, mm-hmm. you're a purist, that you, you get all the sensations and the flavors and the, the nose in it and everything. But at the same time, there's some, some drinks like my gin and tonics, I want extra lime in there. Yeah. I want ice. For, for sure, and yeah, ice is always going <clears> to <throat> you know, minimize the impact of each of the notes. With, when I drink Carbonati, I want to taste every single note, you know. And for me, it, it's also a part of wanting to be able to blind taste all the different vodkas and tell you exactly what it is. Right. So I, I just, for me, it's all it's practice, but I also enjoy it. You know, to be honest with you, when I'm out, mm. I do drink it on the rocks. But as often as I can, I'll drink it neat. Well, I appreciate you being very candid with us to drink it the way you really like it. <laughs> so why don't we what, give, give Ricky a little bit of that? Because I want to know more about when you're when you're sampling it. Got it. What it is about it that you enjoy in its purest form. Got it. Um, I have had it uh, actually without ice mm-hmm. before mm-hmm. when I when I sampled it, and um, I'm curious. I'm curious what your take take is on it, and that's part of I think why for me it also felt experientially like a really high grade quality sipping uh, alcohol, yes. like a, like a tequila. Yes, and you know we we do a lot of events, um, not just Thank because you. we have a ton of fun at events, but. Also because our sample conversion rate is our sample conversion rate is insanely high. So for the most of the people that try it, they like it and stick to it and will buy it. Um, and so, um, you know, at these events, you know, you'll get ladies, sometimes even men, come up and you know, they're like, "Oh, I don't drink vodka straight," and 
you know, we're like, well, just try it. Yeah. And well, because the, 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 there's a lot of mental condition, mental right? Conditioning, yeah. So, like, one, you know, almost every single time, those people, they'll try it, and you'll see their face, and they'll wait for that smack in the face of ethanol that they typically get from vodka. And yeah. It'll never hit them, and, and, and that's where we that's where we, where we, we win them as customers. Well, b- before you, 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 you taste that, I do want to also recognize the man behind the camera, Mr. Andrew Lopez. Who basically should, yes, thanks, Nancy. Nancy poured you a glass, Andrew. So, um, cheers. So, cheers, everybody. Thank you for being on the show, Andrew. Thanks for uh, doing this, always. Um, and let's let's. So, tell me about it. You want to swish it? Okay, so what should we do? Swish it. You want to swish it? Okay. And you want to take a nice smell? Sounds good. One of the things that you'll notice when you swish it is because of the micro-oxygenation, which is typically used within wine, it yeah. has some legs of a wine. Oh, yeah. So it gives the liquid viscosity. You, you can see it a little more without the water because the water dilutes a little bit, but it yeah. coats the glass like a wine. That's what that's what we wanted to add. So when people, my, my, my glass with the, with the ice with the did water. I did it. Don't take the, my legs away from me. Yeah, it still does it. it so so that's the, that velvety creaminess that, that we, we really wanted to get through the micro-oxygenation process. And you can taste that, in, you know, on the tongue. It really is amazing. I wish you guys could taste this. You should go out and get this. By the way, how can people find out about Carbonati? Let's give them out the website and where can they get this. So, houseofcarbonati.com. Um, you can also go to the Instagram, House of Carbonati. Um, and you can purchase it at pretty much, you know, in Southern California, if you're watching this, High Times, where we're at, is the best place to Thank get you, it. High Times. Um, you know, off-premise. And, and, I mean, more and more... Total, Total Wine is another place, but on-premise, high-end hotels and restaurants. I mean, we're getting to the point where pretty much any of them you go to, um, you'll be able to find us. Um, we're we're seasons, going by the day. Four, four seasons, seasons. Montage, yeah. Pelican, Beverly Hills, Hotel. Beverly Hills Hotel. I mean, that's you can you, you kind of understand like where we want to be. And, and, and a lot of that is because we, we want it to be a real luxury product. When right. you go to these places, we want you to start associating. When you see Carbonati, you're probably at a nice place. Well, and, and, and I'm sure those are listed or for more information is again on houseofcarbonati.com um it really is an amazing taste thank you i I don't even recognize that i'm drinking vodka that's good that's the whole purpose of carbonati is elevate vodka so people feel it's really beautiful yeah so and that was the other thing we wanted to eliminate as much of that bite that ethanol as we possibly could so that you could really enjoy i mean i i had friends that you know, six, seven years ago that, you know, that were my age drinking vodka on the rocks. I'm like, You're, that's like disgusting. Like, why would you do that? You know? And, yeah. but they, they like it. That's just how they prefer to drink their vodka. So for those types of people like this, there's like water and like just elegance to them. So those are who we were targeting. But we also like to say we want to, you know, we made it for even non-sippers. Even non-sippers mm-hmm. can sip this and enjoy it and not make that face. So other other than than sipping, well, the only face I'm making is. Mm. <laughs> but other 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 than sipping, how do you guys like to serve it? That's basically it. It's so on the rocks, neat, martini, and a martini, sweet. and it mixes incredibly well with citrus and cucumber and olives. But you, not olive juice. Not, I love dirty martinis, yeah. but it doesn't mix very well with olive juice. Some people like it, but I, I, I haven't had it. I no. mean, she likes it with... You, you know, I'm, I'm a big dirty martini drinker. Mm-hmm. And for me, when you use a high-grade... Mm-hmm. Uh, exactly right. You know, with a dirty... It, it's almost a waste. That's exactly because right. Because really, it's the olive, the flavor of the olive juice that, that you're really going for. Mm-hmm. I mean, I will... I, I'm going to come out and say... I. You know, my favorite is actually a beef eater, mm-hmm. actually, which, you know, most people won't even carry a beef eater. But if you carry a beef eater and I ask for a gin martini, you're golden in my book. <laughs> but you guys might actually get me to switch. I love it. Or at least try both. I love I'm not it. ready to, if I'm, to like, go completely on that side of the, the edge of the transition. I'm transitioning right now. But it's, it really is a very clean tasting drink. And I love the sophistication of that mm-hmm. clean taste, actually. It actually goes, it, we're in a lot of Italian luxury restaurants as well, if you really think about us. We're in Chaconis in LA, we're at Carbone in Vegas, mm-hmm. what other restaurants are we at? Sinatra, Sinatra, Costa de Mare, I mean, it's, we, I mean, if we don't have the Italian restaurant community behind us, then as an Italian brand, you can't win, right? right? So that's, I mean, that's really our core, um, you know, on-premise strategy is to really, uh, 
when you go to an Italian Italian restaurant, know that they have carbonara. So we touched on on where you're at and what you're trying to position. Mm-hmm. And so Nancy, tell me, like, what are your um, what are your goals? I mean, we're entering 2019 right now, and beyond. What are the goals for this? You guys have. It's, you said, Ricky, I think off the air, you said it took about five years to get to here. Correct. Right? And it's small production, right? Yes. Yeah. So there's an exclusivity component to this. 100%. Well, well also, we didn't we didn't want to, as a high-end brand, we're not looking to saturate the market and be everywhere. It's a very strategic, methodical approach, hyper-targeted on um, luxury hotels, high-end restaurants. And that's a longer, harder route. Um, because the volumes are lower. Yeah, but you're smart because you're establishing the exclusivity of the brand 100%. and you're standing behind it authentically and saying, it's not, we're not going to flood the market and tell you that it's an exclusive product. Correct. And that takes courage to, to go down that path. But I think it's also smart given the current market For where sure. you have so much variety, so much noise out there, if you will. Nancy, what are, what are the hopes and aspirations for Carbonati going forward? The hopes and aspiration is that more people will understand and taste the quality and choose the difference within Carbonati versus other vodkas. I think we're currently in California and Nevada. We'll expand into New York and Miami, Florida area because those are the largest consumption areas for vodka. Mm-hmm. But also they are the taste makers for anybody drinking vodka. And so once you have the taste makers and the influencers, then you have everybody else following suit. And so right now we pretty much have secured California and Nevada mm-hmm. as the premier vodka. We're going to expand that into across and then go from there. Mm. Probably hit international soon. You know what, what, I, what I love about that is it's right, right in keeping with everything you have said. Mm-hmm. The, 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 the care that went into it, mm-hmm. the strategicness of behind selecting the area, behind looking at all the, uh, you know, the ingredients that go into it, the process, and then even in how you are positioning it marketing and branding wise, it's amazing the level of sophistication you guys and care. Mm-hmm. It shows. Mm-hmm. It shows. It tastes. It smells. It, it's in everything I'm experiencing with this brand. So thank you both for being here to share with us all Carbonati today. Thank you. And I wish you a lot of success in 2019. Like I said, I can't wait to order my first martini, and it will not be dirty for 2019. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Salute, and thank you for joining us. We'll see you again on the next episode of Selling the Lux Life. Thank you for joining us this week on Selling the Lux Life. We hope you enjoyed the show and look forward to hearing your thoughts and feedback via email on our social media platforms. Be sure to tune in next time as we continue discussing life's luxuries that inspire us while showcasing members of the Orange County community that share our same passion for sophisticated living.